This next fly will tie as a Quigley triple. This fly imitates an emerging mayfly as it comes through the surface film. Oftentimes they'll get trapped in their shuck and their wings won't quite develop, and that's what's referred to as a cripple. This is a good fly to have when you get fish that are a little picky and won't eat a full-blown dun on top of the water, but are keying in the, in the bugs on the surface film. This fly is tied on a Tiemco 100 SPBL. The shuck is going to be made out of brown marabou. The ribbing is going to be copper wire. Our thorax is going to be some olive gray superfine dubbing. Our wing will be some deer hawk fibers. And we're going to top it off with a little bit of grizzly hackle. Now this fly, you can change the colors to match any mayfly that you might encounter. Pale yellow for a uh, PMD, uh, pinkish, uh, pinkish red for a red quill, or olive gray like this for a uh, blue wing olive. So several different color variations, and it's just a matter of changing the dubbing. We're going to start off by attaching the thread at about the 75% point on the hook. I'm going to make a nice smooth thread base back to the bend, and I'm going to run right back up to where I started again, just to keep a nice thread base there. I'm going to start off with a piece of this fine copper wire, and I'll tie this in first, right along the near side of the hook shank. I'll come back to the bend, just anchoring this in place as I go, and now we'll tie in our shuck. The shuck on this is going to be made from just a few strands of marabou. I'm going to pick out a couple of nice fluffy ones, but you don't want it too heavy. I'm going to strip out maybe a half a dozen or so fibers. And I'll bundle this bunch up into a nice little clump on the end. This is going to become the tail of our fly, and we're going to wrap with the remaining marabou for the body. Now, the tips of this particular feather are a little wispy, so I'm going to just snap those off with my fingernail to even them up just a bit. I'm going to tie these in at the bend with just two turns and just a short little stub of a tail. I'm going to lift the marabou and bring the thread back forward again. And now I'll wrap the marabou around the hook to create a fuzzy little abdomen. I'll tie that off with a few turns of thread and trim the stub ends. And now I'll sort of lift that marabou up a little bit so that my rib doesn't bind down too many of these fibers as I wrap. I'm going to take my copper wire now and I'm going to spiral wrap forward over the marabou. And you can see how it will bind down some of the fibers, but we want to try to leave most of them loose. I'll tie the wire off with a couple of turns, and then that fine wire I can just snap off. Now one trick on a fly like this, if you've bound down a little more marabou than you like, you can use your dubbing brush to sort of pick that back out, and that'll just lift it from underneath those wire wraps so you don't have anything bound down. All right, now we're going to dub our thorax on this fly. And this is just going to be literally a ball of dubbing at the front end. And this is going to represent the adult just starting to peek out of that shuck. So I'm going to take a little bit of this olive gray super fine. And I'm leaving a couple of eye lengths here just behind the hook eye for our wing base that we'll tie in here next. But I'm just going to make a little narrow ball at the front end of the of the abdomen. Now I'll run my thread all the way up to the hook eye and back again to the front edge of that abdomen and I'll get my wing ready. On flies like this I like to keep this fly pretty sparse. I don't want a whole lot of hair on here so I'm not going to take a giant clump of hair. I want to make sure to get the hair cleaned out. And then I'll stack it up. And this this step here is a little bit optional. Um, I like to stack the hair because it makes it easier to work with. It makes the fly look clean and nice, but cripples inherently aren't clean and nice in general. So um, if you want to skip that step and just sort of hand stack the hair, pushing it into your, into your palm to even it up a little bit, will do the job just fine. I'm going to take this clump of hair. I'm going to measure it about a shank length long. I'm going to lay it in. I'm going to put two turns around it, and I'll pull the thread toward me to flare that hair so it stands a little more upright. Now I'm going to make a band of thread traveling back toward the front edge of that dubbed ball. So we've got a little narrow band of thread in between. I'm going to trim these butt ends just into a short stub, leaving those butt ends to help add some flotation to the fly. Now we'll tie in our grizzly hackle.
We want a feather that's about the right size for the hook. You know, one, one, one to one and a half hook gaps is about appropriate for this. We're not going to need a whole lot of hackle on this fly, so one long feather like this will tie several. I'm going to strip a little bit of the butt end and anchor this feather down in that thread band between the butt ends of the hair and the tips. I'm going to make just a few turns of hackle in that space. I've got three in there now, and that's plenty. I'll come up and tie that off with a couple tight turns of thread and reach in and just trim the center stem of the feather. Um, it's okay on this fly in particular because it is sort of ragged if you've got some hackle fiber sticking out askew. I'm going to lift the butt ends up and just bring the thread just to the front edge between the tips of the, of the deer hair and the, the hook eye, and I'll whip finish there. I can kind of slide that wing back out of the way and just put a few turns in to prop that wing up, and I'll trim my thread. Now again, this is a fly that you can trim the hackle on the bottom. Um, I'll generally do that when I'm on the water. just in case I want the fly to float a little higher. But typically, this is where he ends up, with a little bit flatter hackle collar across the bottom, so the fly sits low in the surface film. The body of this fly will hang down under the water and imitate the, the emerging nymph right at the surface film with the adult just starting to peek out.